because multimedia presents Dark Souls 3. I'm sorry that we brought this back to Connor again. Are you? No, I'm not. Notice we don't talk much about Roger Moore's career. He just died. I think he... Oh, I know. Wasn't he in one of the um, Cannonball Run movies? I don't know. <laughs> He's in part two. I remember my brother-in-law would always talk about those movies like, yeah, it's like, you go back and watch them, everybody's just drinking and driving the whole time. <laughs> it's, like, it's Sammy Davis Jr. Wow. Uh, Dean Martin just hanging out. Yeah, have you ever looked at the cast for those movies? Like one and two combined? No. I'm pretty sure every single person, whoever was in a movie, was in those movies. Mary yeah. Pickford was in it. Oh no, she was dead, I think. I didn't um, know that name. Okay, let's uh... Let's go to the Cannonball Run cast list. I'll start with one and then we'll do two. So what I think about RPGs and why the Middle <laughs> Evil setting works so well for them is that sometimes oh. people like a sense of familiarity. Oh yeah, okay, I can see that. Okay, here we go. Especially nerds. Cannonball Run Part 1. Which was released in 1981. Directed by uh, Hal Needham, of course. Uh, Burt Reynolds, mm -hmm. Dom DeLuise, yep. Roger Moore uh -huh. as Seymour Goldenfarb Jr., a parody of James Bond. <clears throat> what? Farrah Fawcett, mm -hmm. Dean Martin, right. Sammy Davis Jr., mm -hmm. Jackie Chan, what? Jamie Farr from MASH, Terry uh, Bradshaw, Adrian Barbeau, Peter Fonda, Jack Elam, he, was, he always played bad guys and stuff. Um, hey, June Foray, who played, uh, she did some vocal dubbing, she's uh, Rocky from Rocky and Bullwinkle. I thought you meant like Rocky from. She, she was Rocky. Uh. <laughs> she overdubbed Sylvester that, Stallone. That was my that was my Sylvester <laughs> Stallone. Uh. Hey, what are you <laughs> oh my God! Here's Cannonball Run Two, 1984. Cast: Burt Reynolds, Don DeLuise, De Martin, David Davis Jr., Ricardo Montalban, of course, Tully Savalas, uh, Mary Lou Henner, Blofeld, really? Clean. Yeah. Tim Wait, Conway. Which Blofeld was he? Oh, Charles Nelson Riley. Uh, who? Well, we talked about it a bunch of times. Are you sure? We definitely talked about Charles Nelson Riley. Are you sure? Okay, let's try this again. Sid Caesar. Damn it. Uh, I think Tully Savalas was uh, on a Majesty's Secret Service, wasn't he? I'm always getting them mixed up. But I think so, because... Like, five different people who were in Godfather movies was there, were in this. You only lived twice was, um... Uh, Jim Neighbors. Well, golly! <laughs> Frank Sinatra was in it. Who was Blofeld in, um... You Only Live Twice? Oh, by the way, Richard Keel. Donald Jonas. Pleasance. Yes. Well, I was saying Richard Keel the was... The president from Escape from New York. Just watched that again last week. Escape from New York? Yeah. Love that movie. I like the second one better. I'm pretty sure... Oh, yeah. That's right. We talked about that. How you're in the minority of uh, liking Escape from L.A. Better. Wait, really? I'm the minority in that? It's... Got its moments. And yeah, it was on Her Majesty's Secret Service that... Yeah. Escape. I I like the um, part in Escape from L.A. The basketball game. Remember that? That was funny. That was pretty funny. I laughed a little bit when I saw that. Bruce Campbell is the uh, plastic surgeon. Yeah. Like all the extreme plastic surgery. This town loves a winner. <laughs> Have you ever seen My Name Is Bruce? No. It's got his moments. He's playing himself basically. Some like monster, ghost of bean curd, or demon, or something. The usual. Oh, you're playing a game, sorry. Oh yeah, I had to concentrate for a second. Maybe I should stop getting into conversations about No, I got it. I horrible got it. I got this. Ah <laughs> like <laughs> random eighties movies. <laughs> I got him. Then his tongue flopped at the end. That was yeah. the long <laughs> <laughs> Oh what a great movie. I think great movie that they never attempted to make a sequel for, which I love. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe in the comics. Also made a video game on that. Ro Who Framed Roger Rabbit. They did? Oh, yeah. yeah. For, like, the Game Boy or something? It was regular Nintendo. Really? As I call it. Huh. The regular. The regular Nintendo. Reg. All right, so here's the thing. Well, that doesn't sound scary. This axe is a better weapon, but that spear and the phallic imagery that it brings along just makes a better, <laughs> like, pair for Tommy, for, for Johnny. You are my rose, you are my rose, you are my rose. You are my rose, you are my rose, you 
It'll be it'll do better for uh, research papers and uh, and thesis when you yeah. talk about <laughs> phallic imagery. I mean, the reason I picked this class for for this playthrough is that uh, it's essentially like a white knight. Cause it's got like the spear for the for and health magic because Johnny sees himself as like a white knight in the movie. I always knew you were a racist. Um, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Shit. It's gonna come back to haunt you during your political run, uh, but yeah, I could definitely uh, I could see that choice as being a good one, or rather that Johnny's presented as a white knight in the film. Oh my god! And of course, who's presenting it? Who wrote the screenplay? Exactly. But I mean, like, and his Christ pose after he dies, his <laughs> arms splayed out, and boop. And like, right at the after the uh, movie ends, it's like a postscript. It's like the world was sucked into a black hole after Johnny died. <laughs> so he could no longer live without him on the planet. See, what I want to try to do is do a review of the room, but frame it as an actual work of high art. Because people can justify the Star Wars prequels as, as, like, artsy films. Somehow. I want to try to do it for the room. <laughs> Who are these people, and I don't want to talk to them again. Uh, bribe millennials? Uh <sighs> Poor bastards. Yeah. Um, I always wanted to write a play version of the room. Well, wasn't it a play it was originally? Like, well, like one where it's like actually, like all the absurd stuff in it makes sense. It'd be a hard task to do, but like I, you know, make it like seem like a legitimate piece of art or something. I kind of want to help you with this. I think we should. And the other thing is, where's the the room, the musical? <laughs> you know, that's going to be coming out sometime. Oh, and why aren't we writing it right now? We need to find Johan or whatever. What's his name? The guy that did the soundtrack? Oh, like Dimitri Gusklavis. Dimitri Gusklavis scan or something? I am American now. Wait, wasn't it Johan? No, it was, it was uh, something Maslov or... Um, oh, wait, isn't it right over there? Is it? You, you own that movie, don't you? Oh, yeah, I thought you meant the soundtrack. Oh, yeah, that's back in my house. The one that you were reading during our promo. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I don't see the room over here. Um, It's probably somewhere. I have to get a bigger, bigger bookshelf. Try the top shelf. I don't think my eyes are working. Uh. <laughs> oh man, what if we did the entire video in front of a fan so we sound all gargly? Gargamel. Oh, so we sound all gargamel. I'm gonna find out that guy's name now. Damn it, you got me thinking about it. I got you thinking. He's like, yeah, it's like some Eastern European name. Like, what would Johnny have for stats? Would he have more vitality or endurance? Remember to put that intelligence down. Um. <laughs> It's only at eight. It's our lowest stat right now. How about uh, overwhelming uh, self worth? Like you faith. Up? More faith, you think? Mladen Mil Milicevic. Milan Milicevic. Miladin. Miladin. Hello, Miladin. Mil <laughs> Milicevic. There should be an apostrophe in that name. I think he played for the uh, Montreal Canadiens. Is one of those um, letters silent? Mladen. Laden. Mladen. He's a professor. What? Of the recording arts department, Lo Loyola. Isn't that like a. Respected school? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Jesuit? No, I mean, that's the school, though. Uh, he is most famous for composing the score of the cult film The Room. The room. That guy could win a Pulitzer Prize, and <laughs> people would still remember him for doing the music God, for The Room. It's like, how the hell did he talk him into it? It must have been those deep pockets that Tommy Wiseau had. He just threw money at him. <laughs> Oh, man. He probably did, too. Oh, my God. Maybe they knew each other in Eastern Europe, a.k.a. Louisiana, where he's from. <laughs> I looked into that. Yeah. Somebody found out that his family's Polish. Okay, that makes sense. Well, but I still think he's French. In The Disaster Artist, there's a lot about, like, the book. Yeah. There's a lot about where he's from. You need to, Have you read that yet? No, not yet. I'll let you borrow my copy. It's, Please it's do. It's awesome. It's very uh, fascinating, and also, you feel like you're imploding within yourself <laughs> when you're reading it. There's an actual story in it where Greg Cicero was staying, you know, with Tommy Wiseau, mm -hmm. and there was, I, I can't remember the story exactly, but it's, and I, I can hear it in this voice, because it's the anything for my princess voice, yeah. but it's like, um, <laughs> like, Wiso, uh Cicero either stayed on the floor in the living room or on a couch, right? and Wiso was like, it had his own bedroom, so he was sleeping in the bed, uh -huh. and uh, something to the effect of, like, he opened his bedroom door, and then, like, got back in bed. Like, kind of as an invitation. And when Cicero stayed there and, you know, didn't go into the bedroom, he heard Tommy Wiseau go, Somebody's chicken! <laughs> <laughs> and 
<laughs> and after reading that, I'm like, I'm going to die. <laughs> I was watching a YouTube video um, that was like Greg Sestero leading a talk, like like a, when that mockumentary film came out, he did like a, God damn it, he did like um, some kind of talk to go along with it in front of st audience stages or whatever, and audience stages, <laughs> um, staged audiences. Look, it's really hard to concentrate on this game and play at the same time. I understand, time. yeah. No, I mean, concentrate on this game and talk. <laughs> Case in point. Anyway, oh, um, he had, like, a reading of the first draft of The Room. God, can you believe that there was a first draft and a final draft? And it wasn't just all <laughs> first draft? Uh, having heard some of the first draft, yes, I can believe it. Oh, my God. There were, like, he's reading it totally unedited and everything. Is so there was a scene like... Johnny c takes out his wallet and pulls out three hundred dollars bills. <laughs> Lisa puts pasta in the oven. Stuff oh, like that. Johns Hopkins <laughs> dollars bills. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> puts pasta in the oven. Anything for my daughter of a king. <laughs> <laughs> Is there another word for that? <laughs> no, that's that's peppy enough. Wait, did you kill the dragon? No, it's always been dead. This is a different dragon. Oh, that's not the one. Did you get past the fire breathing part? I just walked by him, yeah. I think I'm I think I've just uh had hysterical blindness for the last twenty minutes. I don't even know where you are in this game. Me <laughs> well, I'm leaving. Peace. Oh that's right. Um, veggie plant. Chip 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 chip. <laughs>